It is currently 12.37 at night and I'm doing my reading wrap up for 2023, um, which is very typical, but we'll just go with it. Um, okay, so I have this screen recorded and I really, really hope that this will work. Oh, by the way, hi, my name is Daniela and I just, I just thought I'd start this YouTube thing just just for fun, really. Um, okay, so let's do the wrap up. 2023 was a really, really good reading year for me. Like I've never read this much in one year. So I feel fantastic. Also, um, the app that I'm using is Storygraph because I really like the way it tracks things and it gives me graphs and I'm a sucker for graphs. And um, I don't really use um, Goodreads because it's very focused on people's reviews and I just don't care for people's reviews. I'll just read a book if I feel like it. So that's why we're going for Storygraph. Okay, let's turn this on. All right, so can you see it? It should be like here if I didn't mess anything up. All right, so congratulations on a fantastic reading year. Thank you. You finished reading 57 books across 12,299 pages, which is insane, insane. Uh, the first book of the year was Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Um, I did start it in like at the very end of December 2022 and I finished it in 2023. And this was my introduction with, to Toshikazu Kawaguchi, which is now one of my favorite authors. Honestly, I love this book so much and it's just, it was brilliant. And my last book was Why Don't Penguins Feed Freeze and 114 Other Questions, um, which is just like a question book. I read it in December because I thought it'd be like festive and get me in the mood for December. I don't know, but it really wasn't like that. Still, it was fine. Uh, then we have a mood map, um, lighter books push the line up and darker books push the line down. As you can see, I didn't really read darker books, just not my thing. <laughs> um, this is not important. What is it? Mm, no. Uh, then we have books and pages read per month in 2023. So as you can see, we started off January strong with, oh my God, let me click it. I read five books in January, which was, let me turn this off, which was 823 books, uh, pages. Oh my God, 823 pages. And that was amazing. Like I thought that was marvelous. It was already a big achievement for me. Um, and then it just crumbled because <laughs> um, at the beginning, well, the first part of the year to like June or July, I had, um, I was working on my master's degree. So February was a month where there were a lot of deadlines. I had so many essays and then there was, um, there were exams and everything. So it was, it was a lot, so I didn't really read that month. As you can see, I didn't finish any books and I've read like maybe like 100 pages. Yeah, 175 pages. But then I did slightly better in March and April and then May happened. <laughs> okay, so in May, I think like the 30th or the 31st of May was my deadline to submit my um my thesis for the master's degree so in may in may i read so so much but none of this was like books or anything it was mostly academic papers and i just i was going insane it was insane um but i'm glad that is over and it's just i'm glad to never do university again honestly it's it's over <laughs> like happy i've been but never again. Mm -mm. And after that, my reading skyrocketed, as you can see from June. Uh, like in June, I read six books, which 
I don't think I've ever read six books in one month before so it was insane and then it just it just kept getting better and um so my in October and November were the months where I read the most books so nine books and then December was the month in which I read the most pages oh my god okay it was 1904 pages again crazy it was six books I believe um and it was just I had so much fun from June to December because it just reignited my passion for reading and I'm just so happy with the achievements that I got I honestly was not expecting this like from the beginning of the year I thought January would be my best month if you want to say it like that um okay so here we are congratulations on meeting your reading goal thank you and your page goal yay so at the beginning of the year my um book goal was to read 12 books which um i surpassed and then i put it at 24 books which again i did it and then i didn't change it again um and i was like well i reached my goal let me just read for fun as much as I want, as much as I manage. And I got 57, which is crazy. And then for my pages goal, this doesn't really mean anything to me. So I set it at 5,000, I believe. And again, um, I beat it quite easily, which I'm so proud of. Uh, the genres you spend the most time with were contemporary, literary, children's, romance, and short stories. And these are facts, so fully agree. Um, the longest book that I read was The Organized Mind. And for this book, I started it a while ago and then dropped it because it got really, really boring. And then I think it was in January where I well, continued reading it. So I did finish it in January, but I did not start it in January. Um, still 528 pages it's a long book I kind of have this fear of long books they're just like they don't keep my interest up that much um, so this year I will try to read more long books um, just for the fun I guess then the shortest book that I read was 19 pages it was 10 poems for winter um, by candlestick press um, it wasn't really a book well it was a book but it was meant to be like a um, something to give instead of a card for Christmas to someone you like I guess but um, it was just boring I did I bought it to get in the mood for Christmas so it was one of the December books I read um, I wanted it to like inspire coziness and just the outside nature and everything but it failed. I wouldn't say the poems were mediocre, but I wouldn't say they were good either. They weren't for me, that's for sure. Um, the average length of the books you read was 214 pages and it took you around 16 days to finish each book, which is great. Again, there are some longer books and there are some really short books like this one here, the poems. Um, again, 214 pages, makes sense. Um, 16 days, some books I finished in a day or maybe three, others I took a month, um, so it does track. Um, least time spent was one day and it was on Travels in the Land of Serpents and Pearls by Marco Polo. Um, it's a Penguin classic, little short book, so it makes sense, like, there's really not that much to read there. Um, I think most of them are like 54 pages something around that they do keep them um quite similar and then the most time spent like i've said before um the organized mind by daniel levitin um i spent 332 days because i abandoned it at some point and then i finished reading it it was fine nothing groundbreaking it was just it could have been way way shorter it did not to be need to be that long and then the authors you spend the most time with in 2023, uh, Joe Murphy, 
Um, she wrote the Good Witch Witch series. Um, it's like a children's books, but I wanted to read. Well, I bought them um, for October and November so I could get in like the spooky autumny vibes. I did like the books. Then there's John Romita Jr. Um, he he's either a cartoonist or storyline. Um, it was for the Marvel um, comics. Um, I had a series I wanted to finish. Um, so some of the books um, he worked in as well. So that's why there's three of him here. Um, and Toshikao Ukazu Kawaguchi. Again, like I said, I found him this year and I absolutely loved him. I read three books out of the four from the Before the Coffee Gets Cold collection. And I just, I absolutely loved him. Um, 2023's average rating was 3.49, makes sense. Um, I had a lot of five stars, but I had some one stars too, so makes sense. 20, 2023's five star reads. Now, this is the most exciting part and some books just don't make sense here, but um, maybe I'll make a video about them, like explaining all of them. Um, the fir uh, first three are the one I was talking about before the coffee gets cold. Um, it's not a trilogy because there are four books. Collection? I don't, I don't know. Um, it's, it's so good. It's, it's just brilliant. I won't talk too much about them because I will make a video, I promise. Then there's uh, Kim Ji-young, born 1982. Um, then we have How to Kidnap the Rich. Fantastic. Uh, Sweet Bean Paste, Cursed Bunny, Lessons in Chemistry, Red, White, and Royal Blue, My Name is Leon, If the Witness Lied, <laughs> Little Penguin, The Night Before Christmas, and Dr. Wright, which, which just feels so wrong to have on this list, but I guess I scored it a five stars for some reason. Like, wow, okay. Um, your 2023 ratings, like I said, I do have one star but i had a lot of five stars this year which i'm very happy about so it means i loved a lot of the books i've read um also what i really like about story graph is that it is that it lets you um just rate books by um with 0 0.25 or 0 0.75 which is less restricting which is fantastic and then we have some months are better than others. June was the highest average rating with 4.17, which is surprising keeping in mind how many books I've read in June. So having them all be that good, pretty nice. Uh, March was your favorite month with an average rating of 2.75. And December was the month with the most pages read, which was 1,904. Um, I guess I was feeling it in December, something worked out. And um, other story graph users and your 2023 reads, I guess this is an extra part. Um, the most shelved book was Red, White and Royal Blue. Makes sense, especially since there's also the movie now. Um, again, this was a book I really liked. It was really nice. Uh, and the less shelved was the executive, Make Your Life Less Grey. Um, again, <laughs> it's not really a book, it's more like an adult coloring book, but it it is also a book because it does have writing in it, it's just not about coloring. It does tell kind of a short story, um, and we shelf one user, that being me, I added it to the system and I bought this from a secondhand store, so I'm not surprised that no one's reading this. Um, but I rated it at 3.5 because I quite enjoyed it. It, it's, it just showed the life of a very mundane office worker. So it was nice. And at some point, oh no, did it get disconnected? Oh, I clicked on it. At some point, um, I will finish coloring it as well. At some point. Um, then the highest rated book that I've read this year by the community was So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Olu. If I'm mispronouncing that, I'm so sorry. 
Um, I rated that a 3.75, but um, the highest, like the community rating was 4.62. I don't know. I, I found it was okay as a book. The writing was fine. I was just, I wasn't that impressed by that book. I don't know. It just felt very mediocre. I think I was expecting maybe too much from it. Um, but a lot of the things she talked about just felt very plain and I guess a lot of people need that but there, I just I, I think I expected more from it and that's why I gave it a 3.75 and then you have you explore the works of 79 new authors including Rahul Raina, Martin A. Cohen and Josh Kaufman um I don't know why it's giving me these two again but 19 of the books you read were part of a series, which really surprised me because I don't really read series. Which one of them are these? Okay, Robinson Crusoe. What series? How the Leopard got his spots before the coffee. This I understand. Robotech was a comic book, so it makes sense. Uh, Travels in the Light. Is this a series because it's Penguin Little Black Classics? Uh, the Witch makes sense. X Men again, the superheroes. The Talented Mr. Varg. Okay. All right. So I guess most of them make sense. I just I didn't expect it. Um, and then it was only new stories and ideas for you this year. No rereads. Um, I don't really do rereads. I I do want to reread Maurice by E.M. Foster at some point because I love that book a lot but I, I don't really do rereads. Once read, it's read. I'm not gonna read it again, probably. Um, and then this year or it was also, well 2023 was also the year I listened to an audiobook for the first time. It was Franz Kafka, The Metamorphosis and it was narrated by um, Benedict Cumberbatch. It was fantastic. He did such a good job. Um, I picked that one because I will, I wanted to read The Metamorphosis for a long time now. And I found it on YouTube, which is very convenient. So, and it was also very short. So it wasn't like that distracting. And it was really interesting. I, I actually found it really interesting. I don't know why Amnesty is here because I didn't really like the book. I thought it was quite difficult to get through because it was just so boring, but that might have been just me. You finished all the books you picked up this year, no DNFs, so uh, no did not finish. Um, I always finish my books. Sometimes I just, I put them down and let them simmer, but I never abandon them. Maybe I should, but I cannot bring myself to do it. Because when I put it down, there's something in the back of my brain that says, you didn't finish it, you have to finish it. I need to change that. But for now, um, I do finish the books I start. It may take me a few years, but I do finish them. Uh, you read 54 books from your own shelves this year, which is interesting because maybe I didn't check something on the app because all of the books I read, I own, except for The Metamorphosis, which again, it's an audiobook, can't really own it. Um, it was on YouTube. Um, I don't really borrow books because this city's, uh, my city's library doesn't really have that many books. I don't even think, do we even have a library? I think we do, but it's mostly, maybe it's mostly like, academic papers and things like that, but I don't have a library card because the library is really bad. Um, and my friends don't really read. Well, the friends that live close to me, they don't really read. So um, can't really borrow books from them. Uh, they do gift me books for my birthday or Christmas, which I'm very grateful, thank you. Um, but I don't really borrow books. So all the books I read are mine. And I don't know why Maeve Binchy's Chestnut Street is here. I read it in December again because the cover looked like it was about Christmas. It wasn't. I was slightly disappointed. It was a fine book, but not what I was looking for at the moment. 
and then we have 2023 at a glance which is it's just so nice for my little soul to see because it's just beautiful these are all the books um i'm just gonna why is it okay so i'm just gonna talk I'm just gonna say the titles really fast. We have Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe, The Organized Mind, Why We Sleep. Um, it was fine, nothing groundbreaking. Um, Travels uh, in the Land of Serpents and Pearls, The First 20 Hours. Genuinely don't remember what that book is about. She Gets the Girl, it was, eh. they had emojis in the book and <laughs> I just hate that. I don't understand the point. Please don't put emojis in books. Um, then we have Nine Train to the Stars. It was a collection of stories. Some I liked, some I didn't. Uh, Spider-Man, I want to eat, die, but I want to eat Tobuki. It was a really nice book. It wasn't a five star, I don't think so, but it, it was quite a nice read. Um, then there is Before Your Memory Fades. Uh, then Kim Ji Young, born 1982, The Executive, so you want to talk about race, Dublin Poems by Hugo Hamilton, hated that book. It was so boring and so difficult um, to read because it was boring and I just wanted to drop it a few times, but I don't drop books, so I, I struggled through it. I hated it so much, do not recommend. I only bought it because um, the blue of the cover was really beautiful. Do I even have it here? Mm, I don't... It's that one. It's too... It's too deep in it. It's just... I hated it. Then we have Robinson Crusoe. Um, I'm pretty sure I read the shortened version. Maybe. But it might be the long... I don't... I don't know. Uh, How to Kidnap the Rich. Loved it. Again, we'll talk about it later. Sweet Bean Paste, um, Are Snakes Necessary, Wolverine, um, again, X-Men, The Talented Mr. Varg, uh, Cursed Bunny, Lessons in Chemistry, The City Always Wins, which was disappointing because the review on the cover says that they lose, which is like the end of the book, so major spoiler, I do not know why they put that. But again, it's, in, it's inspired by a, a real-life event. So it makes sense that people would know, but I didn't. So I was like, there must be something else happening in the book. Nothing. Nothing happened in that book. It's so boring. Um, the Last Orgy of the Divine Hermit. Hated it so bad. Uh, Red, White and Royal Blue. How the Leopard Got His Spots. Amnesty. Um, what is that? The worst witch, they need to learn about color theory because that green on that purple does not work. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, the play. Um, again, I did not know that this was the play when I bought it. I thought it was a normal book. I was wrong. Um, the Other Side of You, My Name is Leon, loved it. The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole, again, amazing. I really like that. It wasn't a five stars, I don't think so but it's really good. I do recommend. It's so witty and it just felt like I was how I write in my own diary, so I do recommend. Um, the Worst Witch strikes again, then we have A Bad Spell for the Worst Witch. They're children's books, they're really easy to read and they were very comforting and it they really brought me into that October-November feel. Then we have Jelly Berries, which feels like a toddler's like a book meant for toddlers. Again, really enjoyed it. I love books meant for toddlers. Um, the Witches, the play, then there's number one detective agency. Um, I think this year was also the year I discovered um, this author, Alexander uh, McCall Smith. Um, I read number one latest detective agency and uh, fantastic mr vark i loved both books his writing is so easy and accessible but he also makes he makes things interesting and i love that then i read poems by eminescu um <laughs> then i read sweet betrayal this thing here with the heart and the horse is just so bad that it was good like 
the amount the amount of misogyny packed in one book insane um but that happened and somehow i liked it you know <laughs> then erotic poems which don't get fooled by the names it's it's mostly love poems and it's extracts from poems it's not even the whole poems most of the time ufo in her eyes it's fine nothing to write home about it was fine um if the witness lied loved it the night before christmas uh little penguin toad's christmas party uh war journal of an innocent soldier dogs are right uh robotech secret santa hated that book so bad oh my god like think bad fan fiction but like really 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 bad written fan fiction that's what that was and they even made a movie out of that do not understand then there's Nora Roberts with Snow is Falling. That was better. Still read like fan fiction, but it was at least it was written well, you know. There's nothing against it, but it's just the Secret Santa was so bad. Um, then we have 10 Poems for Winter, Kafka, The Metamorphosis, um, Bouchon Paul. Again, nah. Uh, Chestnut Street and the last was Why Don't Penguins Feet Freeze and yeah look at all these books I'm just I am so baffled by how much I read this year it's just I don't understand it myself genuinely do not understand um is there something else yeah that was it this was all I read for 2023 at a glance I'm very proud of myself and I hope 2024 goes just as well, maybe better. My goal for 2024 is to read 52 books because I saw that I can, it's doable. Like it's less than I read in 2023. So I really hope I can achieve that. But again, probably make another video talking about the 2024 reading goals and we'll see how that goes so yep this was my first youtube video i hope it was fine um also the video might be very grainy again filming it on my ipad we'll see how it turns out if not we'll figure something else out and yeah it was nice talking to you subscribe like and bye